Introduction to DNA Replication. So why is DNA replication important and what is it? So DNA replication is the process by which DNA produces two identical copies of itself. And this is important because it allows cell division to occur. And this is because in cell division, um, two daughter cells are produced and in each daughter cell, um, an identical copy of DNA must be in there. Otherwise, the daughter cells might have half the amount of DNA or um, another incomplete form. Cell division is important because it allows growth, reproduction, um, repair, and other functions within the uh, within organisms. So DNA replication is vital for all of these processes. There are four main steps of DNA replication, which we'll talk about right now. The first step is DNA replication fork formation, and um, as shown in the picture, essentially a Y shape is produced from the double helix of the DNA structure. In DNA, as we know, there are, uh, are base pairs and the two strands of DNA um, are joined together um, by complementary base pairs in the middle by hydrogen bonds. So this is how the two strands are joined together. Um, and essentially what that means is if you can see that if you look in the middle, the red letters, the A and the T are complementary strands, so they're attached by a hydrogen bond and C and G, etc. Um, and this is how the two strands are joined together and, and why DNA forms a double helix. Um, an enzyme called uh, DNA helicase, um, as shown in the orange, uh, separates the hydrogen bonds between these base pairs and produces a Y shape like this. So there's two individual strands with the base pairs on each side. So the three, the five prime, the three prime strand on the top still has the TACA, um, the base pairs. However, it's separated from its complementary base pairs on the um, three prime to five prime strand. And as you can see from the image, the strands are in different directions, right? One is five prime to three prime, and one is three prime to five prime. And this will be important later. Just remember that the direction of this replication fork formation is different for both of the strands. The next step is primer binding. So essentially, if you look on the diagram, the, the green things are enzymes known as, or are pieces of RNA known as RNA primers. So this is essentially what starts the replication on each fork or on each side of the fork. So as seen in this diagram, essentially each strand of DNA that's split apart will be the start of the formation of a new double helix. So um, there will be two double helixes formed from the top and bottom strands. Um, on the top strand, the five prime, the three prime strand, um, it's known as a leading strand since the RNA primer um, starts at the end of the uh, fork. So the right here where my mouse is and um, and DNA replication occurs in the direction of the fork. Um, so what this means is that you only need one RNA primer and then uh, the replication can keep occurring in the direction of the fork as seen by this uh, red arrow. This is called a leading strand. On the other, on the three prime to five prime um, DNA strand, we need a bunch of RNA primers because the DNA replication occurs in the other direction. And this, these two patterns occur because DNA replication always occurs in the five prime, the three prime direction. And since these strands are in opposite directions, our uh, replication occurs in opposite directions as well. So on the bottom strand, the three prime, the five prime strand, um, known as the lagging strand, um, you, we need a bunch of RNA primers, which start replication again, because the replication occurs in the direction opposite from the fork. So, as you can imagine, as the fork opens up more, you, you'll need another uh, uh, RNA primer because this section cannot be, um, cannot form the complementary strand without another primer. Since the other, um, other, other strands are going the opposite direction. Um, and these little segments that occur as a result because it's in the opposite direction are known as Okazaki fragments. The third step is elongation. So as this, uh, as the name implies, the two new strands of D 
DNA are elongated into the full um, strands. So essentially, it's the orange arrows in this picture. So in this process, DNA uh, enzymes known as DNA polymerases, they start at the RNA primers, and then they kind of go along um, the, the, the individual strands of DNA and then add the complementary base pairs. So essentially, it forms two identical copies of the original. So essentially, uh, so in easy terms, if you look at the beginning strand, right, the parent duplex, uh, we, we, uh, for the top strand, we start with this, right? This part of the top strand, the five prime, the three prime strand. And then the, the, what the RNA, um, DNA polymerase does is it adds on the base pairs from the bottom three prime to five prime strand. So it forms an, an identical copy of the original DNA. In the lagging strand, however, we need a bunch of, um, this needs to be done a bunch of times because there are many RNA, poly, uh, RNA primers. So essentially in the leading strand, this happens once and along the direction of the fork progression. And then in the, um, in the lagging strand, this happens a bunch of times since there's a, lot, a bunch of primers and it's in the opposite direction. So essentially it looks like this. So you see, as you can see the DNA polymerase are adding on these free nucleotides to form a new strand. Finally, termination. And as this suggests, um, this is the end of the DNA replication. In termination, something called the DNA ligase, which is this blue circle over here on the left, um, they join together the Okazaki fragments. Referencing back to this diagram, we can see that these, these are segments, right? They're individual segments, so they need to be joined together somehow. Since the, the, the new base pairs cannot connect with the RNA primers, they need to be like one continuous line. Before this can happen, however, something called the, an enzyme called the exonucleus, um, they remove all the primers, so all the strands can be joined. And then the ligase joins all the um, Okazaki fragments in the lagging strand. Finally, the exonucleus does one more job. It looks for errors inside the uh, newly formed DNA, uh, DNA strands, and then they correct them as seen on the right. Finally, the two new DNA strands, they wind up to the helix shape and um, two identical DNA molecules.